Hi, today we are with another one of my uh, running teammates, um, Laura Honeycutt. Um, and Laura, let me start by asking you how you got into running. Okay, so the short story is my, I did not really grow up in a house that placed a lot of value on exercise or sports. And, um, and so I cannot say that I le led a very fit life most of my life. And um, in uh, like late 2007, early 2008, I started to change all of that. And I really went on this like big fitness kick, kick and I got myself into shape and I, you know, completely overhauled my nutrition. And then when I felt like I got that kind of stabilized, I started exercising consistently and I wanted a big exercise challenge. So I signed up for the breast cancer three day walk as my first like big fitness challenge. And that's an endurance event and it's walking and everybody goes, but it's just walking. Um, but we just walked 20 miles a day, three days in a row. Oh, wow. And that was the kind of the beginning of my journey of, Oh, I really love this idea of, training for something and and then executing it and getting this amazing high from that experience it also was a was a really great way to to give back to a cause that, that i believed in and so i liked that mashup of this personal fitness challenge combined with advocacy and fundraising for a cause so once I finished that, I mean, I was one of those like follow the plan to the letter for my training. And then when I was done, it's like, I can't possibly keep up this schedule. So I need to speed it up. And that's how I was led into running, which was super intimidating to me. That was probably the fittest I've ever been in my life when I, you know, actually, by the time I got to the three day, I was in really great shape, but I still couldn't run to the end of the block. So I thought I'd like to really try running because I think this is a way that I can still burn the same amount of calories and get the same health benefits in less time. So I signed up for the couch to 5k. It was how I learned how to run and it's how I just kind of gradually built up my endurance. And then I ran my first 5k race on Thanksgiving day in 2008. And I know you've done the Chicago marathon. I've run the Chicago marathon three times. What has running brought to your life? I mean, other than just the, the health benefits and the fitness benefits. And I guess at its core, it's about tapping into your personal power mm -hmm. and, and learning how to overcome the stories that you tell yourself in your mind, um, you know, about what's not possible. Mm -hmm. And so, you can do whatever you set your mind to. I am not a runner. I, I, I don't have the body of a runner. I, you know, I don't have a, like a lifetime of fitness. I'm not an elite athlete. There's nothing special about me that, that makes running a marathon come naturally. You know, that process, that training, it's really hard. Um, but think about something that you want more than anything in the world but you've never had it before. You've got to think of something in your background that you can latch on to, to give you that emotion of accomplishing something super hard. And for me, it is the moment I cross the finish line of my first marathon. Like, I mean, I get emotional still thinking about it. Cause it's like, I can do hard things like that. That, like, you don't look at me and go, oh, yeah, marathon runner. Oh, no. You know, and, and it's like, I did that. And, and I own every step of, you know, the pain and, and, the, and the training, which, I mean, like, everybody thinks the marathon is so spectacular, but, you know, the training is what's crazy about it. Because, like, every weekend, yeah. you're just going up and running double digits mm -hmm. for weeks. If you're, and if you're running the Chicago marathon, it's in the summer and it's like, 
yeah, like I don't just sign up to go and run 20 miles when it's 90 degrees outside and humid. Uh, and so, and so that, that emotion and that, that high that you get when you cross that finish line and you're like, I can stop running now. <laughs> and they're putting a metal over my head and that little metal cape around my shoulders and, you know, like just going, like the second thought is I, I can't believe I did that. And then the third thought is maybe I could do it again. It's just, you know, it's, it's to me, it's like, it is, it is just the perfect metaphor for anything, you know, that you see up ahead of you that's hard, that looks like this, this is just not possible. Um, and you see a lot more people out there running marathons now, way more than ever. And it's still like a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of the people, you know, in our, in our country or in the world. You know, it's still like pretty elite to say that you've been able to run a marathon. Yep. And I think too, you learn so much even from the bad runs. And maybe you learn more from the bad runs than you do from the good ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's funny. I, I tell a lot of stories and I write a lot about some of my running experiences as it relates to how do you apply this to other situations in your life? And, you know, one of the big ones for me is, I mean, there are just some days where you're not feeling it. And then you, you can kind of analyze it and go, all right, what made this not a good run? Like, what was it? Well, this is how I felt. Okay. What, what can I, what can I go back to that I could do differently next time so I don't have that same experience. So maybe it's like, man, my legs just felt like lead. Huh, probably didn't drink enough water yesterday, right? Like it's one of those things that you gotta kind of plan ahead yeah. to make sure that it's a successful experience. And then when you have the not so successful experience, you can kind of look back and go, okay, here's something that I would do differently next time, right? Um, another thing though that I've noticed is if, I, if I'm getting ready to go for a run, especially a long run, the shorter ones are kind of like, oh, you can kind of gut it out if you didn't drink enough water yesterday, right? But the longer runs, it's like, if I'm thinking as I'm preparing for my run, oh, this is really, you know, oh, look at the weather. Oh, it's really humid today. This is really gonna suck. This is gonna be hard. This is gonna be brutal then 100% it is going to be all of those things yeah. and then some. So one of the things that I've learned is I can tap into the, I got this, like th this, it is this, the, the, the conditions are what they are, but I know what I'm capable of. I know I can do this. It's going to be over before I know it, right? And I can set myself up to say, this is actually going to be a really good run. What's going to be good about it is I'm going to prove something else to myself. I'm going to prove that I'm capable of, of rising above the conditions that I see um, to, to execute that run. And, and, and I can decide what the experience is going to be like. And when I'm in that place in my mind, it's just so much easier to... Um, to get through it than if I'm like, oh, I dread this so yeah. bad. Yep. Yeah. And I think that's something that you can definitely pull into the rest of your life too. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it, to me, it really teaches you how to turn something that, you know, maybe you think of it as a failure, but it allows you to turn that around and get something positive out of it. Yeah. I think, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I, I've definitely, you know, my bad runs. I've definitely learned from them. There's, there's always something. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. Like maybe don't go out drinking the night before. You know, that's a good one. Or <laughs> you know, eat a giant hamburger the night before. <laughs> I, I learned that. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, you learn those the hard way, and then you're like, okay, let me go back. What did I? What? What? What did I do that kind of set me up to have this experience? It's so true. And then you can. And then yeah, hundred percent. You you just you apply it to your life. I mean, one of the things that I probably teach the most consistently to my clients and others is, um, is a model I call TFAR, which is your thoughts determine your feelings, which then, um, which then drive you to take some sort of an action or inaction, which then produces a result. And the result always validates the original thought. And so if I go back to this run is going to suck, how does that feel? Well, I dread it. You know, I am feeling anxious. I'm stressed out, you know, and so I'm already like in this emotional state of like hating it. So then what, what action do I take? Well, I, you know, I kind of, I kind of drag my feet. I, I procrastinate getting started. The heat builds up even more. It gets even like more, the conditions get even worse. And then I, you know, I'm like out there and I'm, and I'm, you know, I'm slow and I'm grumpy and I'm like, this fucking sucks. And, you know, and then, so then what result do I get? Well, I have a really shitty run, you know? And so it's like, and so then I'm like, see, I told you that was going to be a bad run. Like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Totally. Totally. And it's like your thoughts create your reality. And we don't really think about that a lot. But that's, I think, just like the most, like the easiest example for anybody who's watching this to see, oh, yeah, I can see how I do that all the time. And it's normal to do that. But when you kind of understand that, then you can say, I don't want to have that result. Mm -hmm. So how do I reverse engineer this so I can go back and like change that original thought? Yep. And then it's like, you know, if, if, if the conditions are what they are, we, we sweated out a lot of really tough training runs mm -hmm. and probably at least one not so awesome marathon because sometimes October can be hot around here. Yeah. And, and, and yet still, like, did it change the feeling that we had when we crossed the finish line? Probably made it even more amazing because it's like, oh, that was really hard. Yeah. And you really feel badass when you finish it. <laughs> like, really badass when you finish it. Cause it's like, man, like not only did I just like complete a marathon in six hours, you know, but I did it in these extreme conditions where, you know, I can remember my husband would say, you know, that, that first year that I was training was a pretty hot summer. Mm -hmm. And, he, you know, I'd come home just whipped from a training run. And he's like, I'm sitting here like debating whether I have the energy to get up and get another beer out of the fridge. And you just ran 16 miles, like in the same heat. And I'm like, yeah, because I'm a badass. <laughs> I remember somebody telling me after, you know, I didn't run as, as, far as I wanted to or get the time that I wanted to and they said but you've already lapped everybody who's sitting on the couch mm, that that's one of my favorites I did yeah yeah and so it's like that just kind of reminds me of that um most people will will think of Brene Brown when when they hear this quote but it's really attributed to Theodore Roosevelt where he talks about like essentially um you know the man in the arena uh, or the person in the arena, it's like nobody really has a right to, you know, to criticize the person in the arena unless, you know, the way that the, the way that Brene Brown summed it up is if you're not in here getting your butt kicked with me, then I'm not interested in your feedback. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can point fingers and you can say, oh, look how slow she is, right? Look how, you know, like form is off or whatever and, you know, anything else. And it's like, get in here with me. Get yeah. off the couch. Yeah, but I'm doing it. Yep. Um, yeah, and I think, you know, and this is, I, I was a girls on the run coach for a while. And it was something that I tried to teach the girls. Like a lot of them, 
we're involved in team sports and when you run it's all you it's your accomplishment and you cross the finish line on your own two feet and nobody can take that away from you yeah and say you know well it was really this other person right right but i i think when you cross that finish line that's something that you own it and mm -hmm. there's nothing that's going to take that away from you a hundred percent and yet don't you find it is a really it still feels kind of like a team sport or at least like yeah. the way we did it yeah yeah i think those those kind of those connections that you make and that support that you know even the the fastest most fit runner is supporting yeah. you know the slow runners like me um oh. and that feeling of it's not competition we're all going to lift each other up mm -hmm. um, which yeah. is i think amazing i love that too i mean i i do find it too for the most part to be a really supportive like the running community in general is yeah. a pretty like supportive inclusive community and it's and it's like yeah you're doing it all on your own but you do have that network around you. And if you're lucky enough to get, you know, a team and a coach, um, you get even more support and it really, it, it really makes it not feel like, because running all those miles all by yourself can be a, a pretty tough thing. Oh yeah. You can only listen to so many podcasts and eventually you've got to be alone with your thoughts. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I just enjoyed, you know, but with, with, with team, it was always a great experience for me because I was always at the back of the pack. Mm -hmm. Um, me too. there was always someone, yeah, but there was always someone who was running with me. Yeah. And so you could, you could get a buddy and you could get someone to kind of make those miles go a little faster, which was incredibly important on those really tough training days because you can just kind of like come on you got this like let's just go to this next water stop here we can take a break for a minute like can take a breather and do some stretching mm -hmm. um and then and then of course when everybody would like ring the cowbells you know like they would stick around and and cheer for everybody who was slower to come in and you know getting that support just made a really big difference yeah that, that's definitely um yeah nobody just went home when they were done yeah we hung around and, and supported each other and yeah like the back of the pack you know i've met some of my best friends in the back of the pack so it's, that's awesome yeah yeah and that's the whole thing it's like you know it, every person is running their own race mm -hmm. but that community support just makes it feel like makes it a little bit those steps just go a little lighter i think yeah definitely um so when you run now you know with covid we're not doing team runs and um how has that changed your routine well for me not too much um because i'm out in the suburbs like we're pretty remote we're we're still in an area where there's not a whole lot of cases it's actually been great because that's just a way that I can kind of like get out of the headspace of all of it, right? Just to be out and, you know, get to soak in nature and go for these runs. So for me, it really hasn't been too different, except, you know, there's no races, right? right. So the part has been, you know, like, oh, that's a bummer. Like, even if I wanted to, there's no races and that just feels weird. Yeah, and when, you know, I don't run as much as I used to, but when I was, you know, always having that race on the calendar was a huge motivator. Yeah, absolutely. Like, even if I don't run, I love, I love to be part of the crowd on marathon day. You know, it's just like, I always say it's like this giant block party in the city. And I always have someone Yep. Running, you know, that I can cheer for specifically. And, and even if I didn't, there would be the team out there and, you know, we've got our own tent on charity row and, 
And so it's, it's always been so fun for me to kind of be part of that day and be part of the crowd, even if I wasn't running. For me, like the energy of race day is just such a motivator, right? Like yeah. before the race even starts, you know, there's, there's all of this energy and you've, and you know, there's music blasting and there's just this electric energy, you know, it's like a little bit of anxiety and a little bit of excitement and a little bit of intimidation, you know, and, and all this stuff just kind of swirling around with the music and the booming voice. And, it, you know, it's just, for me, it's just so much about the experience. Yeah, I completely agree. A marathon, a marathon is like the best of humanity, right? And it, it really is. It's just, it's such an amazing mix of grit and passion and perseverance and, and connectedness, right? Like the connection between the runners and the spectators and the fact that you've got people out there who are like calling out your name because you have, you know got it put on your shirt and they don't know you but they're out there like supporting you and there are people like you know I'm sure you remember the signs too where it's like you know my favorite bib number is put your bib number here <laughs> right or run random stranger run and it's like these people are out here like holding signs that yeah. they made yeah. for us and they don't even know us. It's yeah. just amazing. So what do you say to somebody who finds out you're a runner and says, I'm thinking about taking up running. Should I? Oh gosh. Um, yeah. What, I mean, why not? I mean, to me, if, if someone's considering running, you know, I would just say, go for it because there are like, you don't have to keep up with anybody else, right? You can, you know, you can do it at your own pace. You can, you can do it anywhere you go. Uh, you can do it as much or as little as you want to. It's not like I have to like go to this exercise class at this time or any of that other stuff. It's just, it's, it's not competitive. Yeah. Um, and, and it's just a really, like, I, I personally think it's a really great community too, of just other people, you know, who are passionate about the sport too. Mm -hmm. Completely agree. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. And it was wonderful to talk to you. So yeah, thank you so much for spending some of your afternoon with me. It was such a pleasure, Kristen. Thank you so much for asking me. I really appreciate it. It's been fun. My pleasure. Take care. You too.